Business studies teachers often look to the outside world for inspirations and ideas for lessons. We've come to Brickhouse High School in West Yorkshire to see department head Jill Wright's approach to bringing a realistic flavour of the world of work into the classroom. Jill's approach, which simulates a real-life element of pressure, seems effective. Attainment has tripled in the past six years. Right, well done. Now, just to finish off with, last couple of minutes, we've got true, false. Year 10 and 11 pupils know that they're not far away from applying for jobs, with all the nerves that job interviews can produce. So Jill's developed a series of lessons which both help her students to understand the staff recruitment process and which recreates some of the real dynamics of a job interview. It's very much like a business simulation game in a way. I mean, I call it a role play exercise because they're taking on the role of applying for a job. You are putting the students in a real life business situation. And I do think that the learning that takes place in those sorts of contexts are far more effective than sitting reading a textbook and making notes from a textbook. Pupils assume the roles of both interviewer and interviewee, preparing and participating in job interviews and in some cases delivering the final verdict to the candidates. Um, we're sorry, but we're going to have to say no to your application. Pupils learn that delivering bad news isn't easy and how to structure interviews to get the right information. So, shall I write notes when you do Hannah and you write notes when I do Claire? The main purpose of my lessons is that they've got to look at it from a business point of view. So they learn a lot on an individual basis, but we're specifically aiming to consider what the practical issues are if you are an interviewer and if you are a business. But also from an interviewer's point of view, I've got to try and make it so that I'm going to be fairly approachable. Now just watch the last one. Imagine I'm an interviewer this time. Impressions? You're trying to not make them nervous and you're trying to... What was the one big difference there? What was I doing? Smiling. I was smiling. Yeah, OK. Jill uses this technique as part of an eight-lesson series designed to deliver the Human Resource Management Unit of GCSE Business Studies. So far, the students have produced job descriptions and specifications for a job. They've also learnt about letters of applications and CVs. This is the seventh lesson in the series of eight and tests the pupils' analytical skills. You have received this pack of applications that you're going to get on your desk and you look at all the applications you've got and you've got to make a decision out of your pile of applications which two people you would actually decide to interview. Please find enclosed a copy of my CV. Yours sincerely, Miss H. Briggs. Her CV, it's quite long and it's... Um, She's put what she's interested in. Um, she's got good grades and she's put interest and in everything. It's the best one so far anyway. Yeah, I would put that higher than the others. I find it works really effectively working in small groups because if you did it as a class activity, you'd get maybe one or two people contributing ideas and everybody else will sort of sit back and let other people sort of take the, the, the forefront. Working in small groups, it, it makes all of the students more involved in the actual activity. So my aim there really is to try and get everybody to come up with ideas. For the final lesson, students move from groups to pairs for interview role play. They're rehearsing the actual interview, one as applicant, the other as potential employer. OK, welcome everybody. Um, we've got to the stage now with our recruitment process where we've all applied for jobs. And last lesson we shortlisted where we looked at the letters of application that people had produced and we decided which people we would actually call to interview. What we're going to do today is we're actually going to do the interviewing. So if you were one of the people who was shortlisted last week, you are going to be the interviewees. And if you weren't shortlisted last week, you are going to be an interviewer. I spend a fair bit of time talking about how you should approach an interview, both as an applicant's point of view and as an interviewer's point of view. And again, on the interviewing side, I'm trying to get over the idea that really it's your job as interviewer to try and get the best out of your applicants.
What message have I given? Psycho. <laughs> Psycho, yes. <laughs> Daniel? Not interested. Possibly not interested. You want to get in and out as soon as possible. Yeah, possibly you want to get in and out fairly quickly, yes. Purely by the way I came in, all right, I gave the impression that I probably wasn't in a very good mood and it wasn't something that I was actually going to want to take part in. Business studies is all about options and making a decision based on the information that you've been provided with. So I do try and do that within my teaching. So as part of my strategy in my lesson, I basically said to the group, well, these are the, the possibilities. You select which you would prefer to do. I'll do Hannah, and I'll do all the questions, and then you do Claire and do all the questions as well. So, shall I write notes when you do Hannah and you write notes when I do Claire? Yep. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. Take a seat. Why are you interested in being a bank manager? I was always good at maths and I really enjoyed banking, so I thought it'd be a good career for me. What experience have you had as a bank manager in the past? Well, when I was at school, I did my work experience at HSBC and then um, I'm currently working in the Halifax. We always teach mixed ability groups at Brickhouse High School. So we have to be aware of that because you will always have students who are very, very nervous about doing these sorts of activities. You will also have students who are very, very bright. So you do have to be aware of that when you're thinking about the groupings that you're going to put together. Hi, I'm Ryan Taylor. This is Beckett. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Have you had any experience as a food tech teacher? Yeah, I worked at um, Brooks Bank High as um, the food tech teacher there, and that, I left there. How long did you work there for? I, left, I, I worked there for two years. I always mix the groups up, boys and girls. I always split friendship groups as well because it can be a little bit intimidating if you're going in to be interviewed by two people who you know are good friends. And if there is a weaker student in the group who I think is going to find it difficult to sort of participate on that sort of level, I will try and put them with somebody um, who's going to balance that. Um, why have you applied for this job? I love working with children and I'm a very creative person interested in art and I'd like to educate children in that field. Um, have you had any experience of a job? Um, yes, I have. I've been, I was an art teacher at a different school. Um, I'm just leaving uh, next month. Are you planning on this job being a long-term job? Um, I think so, yeah. I'd like to work up to becoming the head of the department. Right. I can work anywhere else. I have had in the past situations where students have not wanted to take part in the role play, not because they've refused to take part in the lesson, but because they're really very uncomfortable about that sort of activity. And I think you have to appreciate and acknowledge that those sorts of students might have trouble learning in that way. So what I do is I give them the role as an observer. And they have to take part in the activity, but what they do is they sit on the side, but they watch both groups. They sit at the side of a table and they watch the interviewer and they watch the interviewee. I really do believe that they still learn even though they're not actually taking part in the role play as such. They've still got a job to do, they've still got to feedback, they've still got to watch what's going on and hopefully they will learn from that activity in that way. You've got the application, the letter of application that you've read and then obviously you've got the information that you've gleaned from the interview on your two candidates. Now, I'm going to ask for feedback, but I'm going to want to know the good things that your candidates did, OK? So you'll have to tell me who got the job and why, but also bring out some of the good points. So did she show that she got sweet. good experience? Yeah, yeah, they were all short and sweet. And she'd worked as a teacher before? Yeah. OK, so you job. could say that you felt Danielle had more experience. Yes, yeah, so you're bringing out the good... Uh, can we just say that? Yeah, that's fine. Right, Danielle OK. that she'd been like... Uh, doing a course on textiles and designing stuff as well, and Katie didn't say that. Right, so that's exactly what you say as your feedback. Right, that's, that's your reasons why you chose Danielle. Sometimes the interviewers think they've got the easy job, and to a certain extent they do because they're there asking the questions, which is why I do tend to, tend to focus on the fact that they have got a very important role because at the end of the day they're going to make the decision about who's going to be offered the job. So I just think we should go for Claire. Yeah, she she was more confident. Hannah one was confident, but she wasn't as confident as Claire with her answer. I think that showed to not have been as confident, so I want that happy. But also, I think Claire's got a lot. She's got an A level. Yeah, that's fair. And cooking, and she says she can work all the hours needed to work at a school. She's available for it, and she seems to be like she's quite pleased to work with children. However, they also have to take on the responsibility not only of telling the successful candidate that they would like 
to offer them the post, but also to tell the unsuccessful candidate. Hi again. Um, hiya. Um, we're sorry, but we're going to have to say no to your application to be... Okay. You answered the first few questions really well. Then you sort of drifted off towards the end. Also, you asked a lot more questions when we asked you if you had any questions to ask us. And you looked, seemed more keen. And at that point, we were tempted to give the job, but Danielle seemed to have, have more experience at the job than you. I hope that maybe in the future I'll get a job with you. Yes. I'll apply if there is another one. Yes. But I'm going to look Thank you very much. Thanks very much anyway. Thanks to see you. Bye. So how do other teachers get on when they implement Jill's lesson plans? Howard Gilmore in NQT finds them valuable. As a new teacher, when you're doing the recruitment lesson, it can be really, really rewarding to see the kids doing um, something whereby there's an end product, um, really getting involved, then motivated, and they're kind of making really sensible, good answers to your questions. To get Howard started on the right track, Jill stresses the vital importance of preparation. We did actually spend quite a lot of time discussing how he was going to um, organise and administer the lesson because there is a fair bit of thought that has to go into the lesson before you actually deliver it. But really, um, she was talking about kind of fine detail and the practicals of, of how to get the best out of the lesson. So things like seating plans, groups, who should be working with who who to focus on and what sort of things you should brief the kids on beforehand. If you don't prepare the students well enough, you could find that the actual role play doesn't actually bring out a lot of benefits for the students and therefore doesn't become a, a learning situation. So we talk through strategies to try and improve the quality of questions to make sure that the interview role play actually went smoothly and, and, and went well. So he took all of those sorts of things on board um, and I, th I think it worked really well and I think he at the end of it, I hope that he appreciated that it was a different way of learning, but one that was actually very, very beneficial for the students. What I found surprising was they took it so seriously. In a normal lesson, where they sat down in front of textbooks, you get a different kind of behaviour. Now, in the role play exercise, suddenly you've got Year 10 GCSE kids behaving like adults, really trying to impress you and impress the interviewer, and trying to get some practice in at the real thing. So I was, I was absolutely delighted. I'm quite surprised by their behaviour. I've learned that it's a longer process than I thought it would be and that you have to present yourself well in an interview and you, have to do, you do have to have experience in the past. So everyone got involved and no one was really negative about the lesson. The hardest thing about being in an interview was at the end telling the person who didn't get the job that um, how they react to it and saying good points and bad points and just being motivating as well so they can go on and get another job somewhere else. Jill Wright's step-by-step -step guide to delivering these lessons and the rest of the series can be found on the Teachers TV website. Business studies is all about running a business, so it is a very practical subject, really. And at the end of the day, when they go to work in a business, they're going to be coming up with these sorts of situations and hopefully the role-play exercise will give them a little bit of a flavour as to how they could deal with the situation when they approach it later in life.